Welcome guys to the ultimate guide to finding winning products in 2021 without spending hundreds of hours on product research. Hey, what's up everyone, Yaniv here and welcome to another video. If you don't know me or what we do here on the channel, like I just said, my name's Yaniv and what we do is we basically put out course level information for absolutely free for those of you who don't have enough money for a program or are just not ready to invest in one right now. And this is a part in the mini course series that I've been putting out. We've already done a PPC launch, a whole ultimate guide to launching your product and also an ultimate guide to uh, getting reviews. So this is just in line with that. We're going for an ultimate guide for finding winning products so you can get ready for 2021. I'm also gonna be doing a keywords one, uh, an ultimate guide and just a whole other you know bunch of ones. It's kind of like a mini course to teach you everything you need to know because this you know, video right here and those videos together, um, they're literally better than you know, most thousands of dollars uh, courses out there, thousand dollar courses out there. So, and that's my goal with this is that I wanna make sure that you get the value um, you know, for absolutely free. So like I said, my goal for this video is to teach you exactly how to find your next winning product in 2021 and how to grow that product into a long-term successful brand. And you've probably heard that before, Tons of people talking about, you know, you got to build a brand, you got to do this, right? But what does it actually mean? And also, how do you start off building a brand? In the past, I would have just told you, go out there, do some basic product research stuff, um, and then, you know, just find a product that sells well, and then try to build a brand around that product. But in the recent years, and, and actually, I would say in the recent, in the last year alone, I really have changed my perception on this. And I feel it's much more important to find a niche that you're passionate about or something that you are okay with working on for the next five to 10 years rather than just some random products. Because in my own personal experience, I've sold random products before, made a lot of money selling random products, but really, you know, at a certain point you get burned out and you don't really care about what brand you're building anymore. And that's gonna slow you down. So really, I'm gonna show you in this video how to find something that you're passionate about and that's also gonna make you a ton of money. So stick around for that. And as per usual with this mini series, if you stay to the end, I have some little bribes for you. I'm gonna teach you my little known product research strategy that finds me literally 95% of all of my products. Um, so it's just one that I use. You don't need like a hundred of them. Number two is my differentiation strategies and improvement capabilities, right? Not just simple bundling or something like that. You've probably you know, heard simple differentiation stuff, but I'm gonna really show you how to stand out from the crowd. And three, I'll share with you my product validation checklist. And up, in the, uh, up until this point, I've only shared that with my Ecom Limitless uh, program community. So that's my little bribe for you. I hope you do stay to the end so you do get some value from this. So here's the reason why you're struggling to find products, right? 95% of all sellers are falling for a huge misconception and truthfully, it's because they follow a lot of the stuff that's been you know, said online. Uh, that a lot of the, this doesn't work anymore, especially when tens of th thousands of sellers are doing the exact same thing. So here's how that kind of misconception goes. Fill them some random criteria into Helium 10, Black Box, or Jungle Scout Web App, or whatever tool you're using uh, that spits you out random products. Follow something like going, you know, filtering 15 to $25, less than one pound, 10,000 plus revenue, 300 plus sales, seven out of 10 sellers on the first page have set less than 75 reviews. Stop me if you've heard any of these before, right? Because this is exactly what everybody is looking for. Uh, you know, fits in a shoebox, right? Stuff like that. At that point, it just becomes a race to the bottom in terms of price, right? Who's willing to take the smallest profit possible? And, uh, you know, leads to, like I said, market saturation in just months. Only a few people who got in first or people who really revolutionized and differentiated are actually ever gonna make money. Everybody else is just gonna lose tons and tons of money. Short-term thinking, and nobody, like I said, but a select few people actually win like this. So here's what I do instead, right, using my strategy. I find my whole brand all at once. Basically, you look into a niche and you find a whole product line that you can sell. And this is actually something that I'm using right now, and hopefully in the next couple months, I'll be able to share a case study with you guys and teach you guys exactly how I've implemented this strategy in like, a whole business that I'll be sharing with you. So that's, you know, that's something to look forward to. So if you are wanting to see that, remember to hit the subscribe button. I know we're early in the video, but um, if you don't wanna miss anything like that, trust me, stay subscribed and, and look out for those videos. Um, also, I look for long-term success in markets without having to deal with a race to the bottom in price, right? So basically you find things that you can grow into right? Brands and markets you can grow into. So they might start off a little smaller, but over time they'll continue to grow and you'll become more and more profitable in the space. Rather than what most people do is try to find the most profitable product at once. And then as time goes on, it gets less and less, less profitable, right? So it's the opposite, right? That's short term thinking. It's going to might be profitable at first for a few people. And then it gets less profitable as people saturate or we find something that's maybe a little less profitable at first, but then as you continue to build in that brand, brand recognition and continue to improve your products and your market, 
you know, you make more. So that's my main strategy right now and what I'm doing with that case study, which can't wait to share with you guys. Now, I know a lot of people might be wondering, like, do I really need a product research tool? Uh, the truth is yes, right? You can, you really are just shooting in the dark if you don't have one of these. And to be honest, Helium 10 is what I'm using right now. And for the price that you're getting it for, it's, you know, you use it for much more than just product research. There's tons and tons and tons of things you can do with it. So really, I would say if you don't have a product research tool, definitely use Helium 10. If you've already purchased something else, it's not a big deal. They're all pretty similar. I just like Helium 10 because it has a bunch more other amazing features that, you know, um, I share on the channel so you can check them out. If you do want to sign up for Helium 10, I do have a link in the description with the biggest discount you can get. Go ahead and check it out. You will not regret it. They also have like a, you know, money back guarantee if you really don't like it. So might as well check it out. Now we're about to dive right into the really good stuff here, but there's a few things I need you to know, which is some things to avoid. And these are just recommendations, but um, for the most part, even I follow all of these. So one, big brand names, right? So when you are looking into a market and you're gonna follow everything that I show you, make sure to watch out for big brand names. They draw traffic from off Amazon, which means that even though the market might look good, really what's actually happening is a lot of people are coming off of Amazon and then buying their product in particular. They don't really care about your product. I'll show you how to really avoid those two, but always do some research on the top guys in your market to make sure that you're not going into something that's maybe doesn't have that much demand only has brand demand. The next thing to avoid is anything seasonal. You've probably heard this before, but as a beginner, it's really hard to inventory forecast, especially now with the 200 inventory limit. It's just a disaster. So I would say avoid anything seasonal until you have some experience selling on Amazon and you know how everything works because going for something seasonal is, is kind of like a, a more difficult level. You know, it's, it's, like, it's like leveling, you know, it's like level two, right? So start with level one and then move up to level two if you do wanna do that. Number three is anything having to do with that, okay? Because again, it's very seasonal, it's very trendy right now, it's like a fad thing, right? And so that's one thing, right? There's just a bunch more demand now than there will be maybe in a year or two. Aside from that, it's also something that is, you know, that has a lot of uh, certifications and requirements that you may have, they may need, right? So for example, I know that like masks, you know, you need to have certain certifications that they don't approve everyone. So you might've just bought a ton of masks and then you can't sell them on Amazon. A ton of people were trying to sell uh, sanitizer, like um, hand sanitizer and stuff like that. Again, you can't do that. You need certain, you know, uh, certifications. So again, avoid anything to do with this. It's very short term, even if it's for another year or two, just trust me, it's not worth it. And you'll probably get stuck with a bunch more inventory than you think. The next thing is variations. Anything that's based on design. So for example, jewelry. And I know that probably you won't be selling jewelry, but that's just an example to show you like something that has so many different designs. It's just really hard to keep in stock. And there's more than likely there will be just one or two things that will be 80% of the demand. And then everything else will be 20% of your demand, but keeping those things in stock and stuff like that can be a complete disaster. So especially if you're starting off again, going variation, stuff like that, again, that's level two or level three. You know, you can work up to that if you do want to later. But at first, keep it simple. Another thing that you absolutely should avoid, this is, I think, you know, mandatory, is clothing and textiles. Not only are they obviously incredibly, incredibly saturated uh, with just so many different people trying to sell clothes, um, but two, they also have tons of variations, so tons of different sizing, right? So you have like each design needs to have a small, medium, large, extra large, whatever. Uh, you know, tons of different stuff to keep in stock. Two, they have high tariffs. And three, they have a high return rate because a lot of people buy it, right, online especially. And they think they're a medium, then they try it, they're like, oh, it doesn't fit very well, and then they return it. So just a whole bunch of things to deal with. I really, really would not recommend going into anything with clothing and textiles, even if it has good, you know, it shows good margins and it looks good on, on uh, you know, Jungle Scout or Helium 10. Uh, the truth is a ton of those sales are actually being returned. And lastly, kind of goes into that one point we talked about to avoid, but avoid trends and fads. Don't get looking, don't look for something that's gonna be a get rich quick scheme. Again, nothing worth having comes easily, guys. This is gonna be hard, but you know, live by that motto. That's one of my mottos. Nothing worth ha having comes easily. So let's talk about my strategy, right? Picking something you're passionate about. I know I mentioned this a little bit, but let me just dive in deeper so you do understand. So this is my new ways, like I mentioned, to starting brands and selling on Amazon. It's very important to do it this way. And it's because instead of looking for, you know, what everyone else is looking for, I'm looking for actual markets and niches instead of using those random filters and then finding random products. Look for markets. I'll show you the, why that's so awesome in a second. And it's also good because you can just put in your passion in there, right? If you want to do like meditation or you're into golf or whatever, you can find products within that niche, which I'll show you how to do in this video. And the truth is the passion still needs to be profitable, right? Like I said here, if you're into underwater like basket weaving, 
Uh, it may not be the best no matter how passionate you are, right? It still needs to have some sort of market. So you might need to write like a little bit of a short list of like the different markets you'd wanna sell in, maybe write like three of them and then follow everything that I'm gonna show you in this video to decide which one to go into. And here's the important part, right? This is an iterative process. And that's the same reason I said, you know, write three markets down because if your niche that you pick isn't profitable, you go back to the start and you relook through that market. So let me explain how this works. So you choose a niche slash market. Again, this is something in your head or you can do some research and find out something that you'd be interested in actually working on for the next five or 10 years, right? Don't look at something you're, you know, uh, just random fad stuff, something that you'd be down to work on and, and build a real business around. The next thing is you'd ask yourself, is the market profitable? Again, I'll show you how to do that in just a second. There's definitely a bunch of different ways to do that. Then if it's a yes, you move on to building your brand. Cool, you're good, that's awesome. If it's a no, then you start over and you go back to the beginning to choose a niche slash market. So here's my favorite way to do this and it's called, I guess there's no real name for it, but I like to do it. It's just looking into other people's storefronts. And so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna write a keyword that uh, I'm looking to get into, for example, right? Let's say if I wanna get into like meditation or that's the niche I wanna get into. You might think, okay, meditation, that is so saturated and you're right. Right? There's things that are saturated within meditation, like for example, yoga mats, right? That's probably not something I would sell for a very long time until you have a you know, established business. But there are a lot of different products within the niche of meditation that you can start off with that actually have you know, really good demand and also are you know, profitable products. So let me explain to you how we do this. Uh, let me just type in meditation. And there's a couple ways. One very simple way, I'll just say it right off the bat, is to just go through here and just look at different things. So like meditation cushion, meditation pillow, meditation gifts, decor, you can look through that. And you can even type in like meditate, meditate candles, accessories, whatever, and you can just put different keywords that have to do with your market. But in this case, you're just gonna come in and just type in meditation. And once you've done that, you're gonna get you know something like this. A lot of the times it's gonna be a lot of random stuff. And truthfully, that's okay, because what you're doing is you're not looking necessarily at you know like books and stuff like that. There is actually tons and tons of pages of this. So if you scroll down, you'll see that like, um, you know, there's seven pages, right, of, of stuff. And I actually do this a lot. Whatever brand I'm looking for, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna type in the main, you know, niche and just, just go through it. Just, you know, look at the different products that show up. So we have this thing, right? Obviously this is super competitive, 7,000 reviews. This has 3,000 reviews. So these are quite competitive things, but literally right at the top, right, like literally at the top, uh, we have this right here. It's a mindful and modern folding adjustable pro meditation chair with 20 reviews, it's $189, which is a little bit weird, right? That's kind of expensive for a lot of people. But truthfully, you don't wanna be looking at the 15 to $25 you know, mark anyways. You wanna look between the 25 and $50 point. Um, in the past, you know, about $20, $25 was okay, but now you really, to be properly, gotta look higher than that. This is a little bit too expensive, but just gonna open that up. So I just opened it in a new tab. We'll get to it later. Just start looking through stuff and opening things that are, you know, that look cool, right? So even this right here, uh, Monk and Lama kneeling meditation bench with foldable legs. Okay, cool. So that has 141 reviews. That's not saturated at all, right? And I'm gonna share with you guys my profitability, uh, you know, sheet in, the, in a little bit, that kind of profitability, profitability validation sheet uh, that I mentioned at the, at the beginning and show you how to use it. Uh, but that's later down in the video. So we're gonna go through that. And what we're doing here and through the different strategies I'm gonna show you is we're just gonna be like writing down interesting products, things that are just interesting that we may want to look more into. So I just opened two of those, those products that we may wanna look more into and, and kind of analyze. So just build your list, open up like a note sheet or something and just write down a list of different products and you can even you know copy over your URL to that if you wanna go you know see it. So let's say if we have like this product right here, just grab the URL, copy and paste that into like a note sheet or like an Excel sheet or something. I won't do it here because that's, that's kind of like, you know, it's pretty boring. So you guys probably don't want to see that. So let's go look through, through this. I'm not going to spend too much time on either of these methods because there's a lot more to show you. But this is one thing to do. And again, okay, so we have another one here, 16, right? Again, I don't know how much these products are even making. So it, it might be, you know, you might want to open them up and see like how much each one of these are making. So this one, for example you know, 15K, so that's perfect, that's great. Even though it is a little expensive, we can we can look into that market and see if there's other things that we might want to, to sell also. Open this one, let's see, this one's $60. Um, again, so this one's 3,000, it's a little bit low, so that's on the lower end. We wouldn't wanna, you know, be selling something like that, but you can even go into all departments, remember you go into there, and you can even open up like the actual 
market for these uh, kneeling benches. What you have to remember is this process is like gives you a starting point. So right now we have a starting point of this page. Just go through it, open up a bunch of different listings. Even if those listings are not profitable, we I can show you how to continue going down what I like to call like the rabbit hole. It's a method that I kind of invented, you know, a few years back and I've iterated it since to be able to work with like the stuff for 2021. So Again, this is not something you're gonna find anywhere else. So I'm sharing this. This is kind of like one of my best kept secrets is this rabbit hole method and this iteration in particular to what I'm doing. So stick around for that. Uh, but again, you go through here, open up a couple things that are interesting. Don't open up things that have like 600 plus reviews, but things that you know may be cool but have like kind of lowish reviews. Um, so I'm not gonna spend too much time here again because it's gonna take forever, but Again, you can go through all of this. It's not, again, nothing worth having comes easily. So go through those seven pages and, and do this. So let's go into this one right here. So this is called a meditation chair, I would say. So for example, the way you find out what the main keyword is, is think about what a customer would actually search up. In this case, I'm sure if they were looking for something like this, they might write meditation chair or meditation seat, something like that. So go ahead, copy that, and then take a look at the market as a whole. We'll type that in. And as you can see, so this looks like it's even, this is a meditation bench, but it may be, no, so it's not It's not the same product. So that's a different type of product. But as you can see, there's a bunch of different products here. There's a bunch of different styles and types. So we're gonna write this down. Um, there's this style, and you can figure out which one of them is making you know the most money and which one you can sell. So this one is modern folding. So it's a folding meditation chair folding meditation chair. Okay, you can see one here, 368. And you can even open up the Helium 10 calculator and see which ones are making the most money. So these are now we're looking at different styles of meditation chair. So now we found a meditation chair, but there's also a bunch of different styles that you can look at too. So this is the revenues. So there's one, let's look at the revenues and the reviews. So review count 368 is making 10,000. That's still possible to compete against. That's not too competitive. I know a lot of people might think that's competitive. It's not 439, you can also compete with that. That's a meditation bench. Um, this one's making 60,345 reviews. Okay, so that's an incredible product, right? It's 60,000, this kind of style, 60,000 with 345 reviews. That's, that's amazing. So, uh, I mean, I guess I'm sharing good products with you guys here too. So um, I'll show you how to look into that. But so this is probably the most promising one at the moment, this kind of style, which again, so this is pretty similar to this also. So we can look into that style in particular to differentiate from the market because there's only like this guy who sells that kind of style. This guy has a similar style. And then really everything else, you know, there's, that's the same guy but sponsored. So you wanna look at different styles also that are making money. So that's one style that was good. So we're gonna write that down, we're gonna keep that there. You can do the same thing with the meditation bench. I won't spend too much time on that but um, you just basically look at the meditation bench, you know, type it in here and see the different styles that might be making money. Um, another thing where you can take this to the next level, let's say you get stuck, let's say you did this, right? And you didn't get as lucky as I did where you just found like something that's making 60,000 that's interesting to you and um, you're kind of stuck, you don't know what to do. So one really cool thing you can do is to expand this and find more related products is actually go into their storefronts. So you go to sold by, go into the storefront method. Then we'll go into, you click right here and it'll show every product this particular seller is selling. So, okay, here we go. So this isn't even, has doesn't really even have to do with meditation, but it kind of has to do with meditation. Um, so he's only selling two products. Let's open up the Helium 10 here and you can see if there's, if that product is doing good. So see this product right here is making 20,000 per month. So we just like, I'm, this is not pre-recorded. This is like, I've, I, I haven't looked into this particular uh, this particular market or this particular um, product here. So you find this product, that's another product you can look into. And let's say you let's say you came in here and you found nothing, okay? There was nothing interesting to you. Let's say that you didn't find this, this other, other product that was good. We can go into, let's go back to meditation. And let's say even here, right? You, you can't find anything that you're interested in and you can't find anything that has any good reviews or anything that's, you know, cool. Click on anything random. So I'm just gonna click on this random Florenzi adjustable like, pouch, right? And let's see how much money this guy's making. Open that up. Taking its sweet time here. Okay, so it's only making 5,000. So not very interesting to me. You know, I wouldn't care to look into this market. But let's go into the Florenzi storefront. 
then look into the collection. And okay, so they sell so they sell this another kind of pouch. So okay, so obviously these pouches are very competitive, right? That's why it's probably not making so much because this one's 3,000 reviews. It's probably making a lot of money. There's yoga wheels, okay? If you guys watched other videos of mine, yoga wheels, again, has it's a you know, similar market, has to do with yoga, meditation. You know, you can kind of, you know, blend that together, right? Um, weighted blanket for kids. I don't think this has much to do with that at all, but for some reason that's being sold there. I think those are really competitive though anyways. Here's the product that we found. Okay, yoga bolsters. So this is also kind of within that meditation yoga space. You can, you know, merge those two together. You can look at the bolster. So you can open up like, you can type it on, on Amazon, you know, type in like yoga bolsters. And from here, you can see, so, okay, they're pretty competitive. So I would say these are a little too competitive unless you find something to differentiate with. Even then though, it's probably a little bit too competitive in this space. No worries. Again, even if you got here, you can just go click on somebody else. So let's say we click on like this guy. Okay. And let's see what else this storefront is selling. Okay. This one's from Amazon. So that didn't work out well. Let's go back. Let's find somebody else. So that one's sold by Amazon. Let's see this one. Ajna. Okay. So click on Ajna and let's see what other products are selling. Cause if they have one product that has a 1200 reviews, they probably have other products in here too. So I think that's the one, uh, here they have a yoga mat. Okay. Again, too competitive. They have this fabric resistance pans. I personally wouldn't think that this has much to do with yoga or meditation. So I would probably, you know, wouldn't, wouldn't look at that. This is a cool one. Acupressure mat pillow set. Very cool. You can go in here and you can type in next thing you can type in is, so I'm going to open a new, cause I think we'll, we'll check this product cause that product looks awesome, but let's just type in acupressure mat. I've seen this before. So I know it's a pretty decent market, but at this point I think it's gone pretty saturated. So yeah, you can see 5,000, 21,000, you know, they've gone pretty saturated. But still, you can see that there's a product here who has 99 reviews and it's, you know, number one. And also you can see that this is better quality. I think this, yeah, see, this is Ajna. This is the better quality version. So if you can sell the better quality version, you can probably get away with, because it looks like there's a cheap version, which is this kind of version. And then there's a better quality version. that looks like this has a traveling case and stuff. So, um, you know, if you can find and source something like that, it could be good. So this is, I see that's Ajna also. See those products with 59 reviews. I don't even think we, do we even open up how much this is even making? Let me see. So you, you don't want to get carried away, but you want to check how much this is making. I think it looks good. So it should be making, yeah, look how much money this seller is making. Yoga bolsters, 123,000 in revenue from that alone. Um, okay. Is that what that was? Yeah. The acupressure mat is making $75,000 per month. Okay. And it has, uh, 254 reviews. So you see how you can go into different markets and different seller storefronts and, and actually see other products that are maybe less competitive, but have a lot of, uh, you know, promise, right? Here's one right here, 37 reviews, six, 63 95 in price. How much is this product making? And hopefully this is not too tedious, you know, this video, but I'm really trying to show you inside the mind of like what I would do if I'm, when I'm doing product research and when I'm, you know, looking at this stuff. So, okay. So this is it. Ajna Velvet Zabuton, 10,000 per month with 37 reviews. Like, I mean, this is something that you can easily get into a market like that and sell something like that. Now, obviously we have to make sure it is profitable, but if this person is selling it, it probably is profitable in that space. And, um, let's, I'm going to show you one more rabbit, like go a little bit deeper into the rabbit hole. So we type in, what is this called? Zabuton meditation mat. Zabuton meditation mat. Go to amazon.com and search that up. I guess Zabuton might be a type of mat or something. I don't know what it is. Maybe, I don't know what Zabuton is. Zabuton mat. I think it's these like flat mats. But look, 120 reviews. There's not that many reviews in this market except for maybe this guy, but I think that's a little bit different also. Let's open up the, the X-ray here to see how much money these people are making. And so you can see, right? So what's this guy right here? This guy, 37 reviews, 10,000, that's that one. Okay, this one has 40,950 reviews, but I think that's the one that's not really the same. Yeah, that's not really the same. But you can see that, um, you know, eight, 10,000, you know, you could probably find, you know, squeeze your way into here and make like, you know, two, $3,000 profit per month. It might not be the greatest product, but you know, $10,000 per month, I mean, that's pretty awesome. So um, this is exactly the products that you're looking for. You're looking for revenues between like 7,500 and 10,000 per month. So. This is something that, you know, falls within that. Um, so again, even if this turned out to be bad, you can go into click into this guy, right? This guy was making a lot of money, go into his storefront, Lee Wadi, 
and then look at what other products because most of the times the products will be somewhat related so again okay 335 small yoga bolster pilates so maybe we looked at yoga bolsters they're not that you know they're pretty competitive so we won't look into that too much and see what else they're selling here i mean you can really look around and, and find it I, I hope i got the point across of how to do this rabbit hole method because this is the one that gets me 95 percent of my products i just keep doing this i keep looking into different people's products into different markets into other people's storefronts and eventually i build out kind of my brand like what i'm going to start with and what i want to continue with you just write a whole list of different products that are potentially profitable and I'll show you later how to validate if they're going to be good or not. So one big thing that people don't look at is actually using Alibaba to find products uh, and products in specific markets, right? Because everything that's pretty much sold on Amazon or most things that are sold on Amazon, you can actually source them from China and a lot of those things are being sold, sold on Alibaba partic in particular. So what you got to do here is just go into products, click on suppliers. Uh, so, you know, you're looking at different suppliers and from there we can look into their catalogs, right? And then here you just want to type in like meditation. Right, so that was our, you know, our market that we're looking at. So from here, it's very important too to go to trade assurance and verified suppliers. You still want to do that same thing, and you want to go to you know look at the the big boys, right? So I wouldn't look at someone that's making fifty million to hundred million. That's crazy, or above hundred million. That's crazy. You can do like the ten to fifty million, and even two point five to five million, right? Uh, and see what products they're actually selling. I think I put 2.5 to 5 million. That's fine. You can even change that after too. So you're looking at the bigger, you know, manufacturers in the space. So from here, you can go to like, um, let's say, let's find like a really, let's find a big one actually. Let's go to 10 to 50 million. 10 to 50 million. And let's find a really, so 1.8 million. Um, yeah, let's just do this one go into their actual storefront and you can go into their products and you can see they have weighted blankets. So I guess weighted blankets are similar to, you know, meditation stuff. They have cushions, pillows. Uh, okay, but these don't look to be like much meditation stuff. This is gonna happen sometimes. They sell baby stuff, bedding. Okay, so I would get out of this one because it doesn't actually seem like it is what we're looking for, even though they have some meditation stuff, which is interesting. Um, let's go into this one. And this is going to happen. I'm just showing you guys real like uncut footage. Hopefully you, you know, appreciate that, I guess. So acupressure products, acupressure pillow set, acupressure accessories. You can look through that. So these are some, see, these are things that I've never even heard of, right? So this looks to me like it's similar mat. This just looks like an even worse quality mat. But I mean, there's other acupressure stuff, I guess, that, you know, might not be on Amazon yet. That's one thing you can look through those products. You can also look through there's yoga products, mat, bolster, strap, accessories. So bolsters, remember we talked about again, it seemed like it was a pretty competitive market, but that's you know some bolsters there if you didn't know about that product yet. Again, from here you just go to Amazon, search those products up, and then again you can look into other people's storefront. So this is like another starting point. Instead of typing in meditation on Amazon as a starting point, you can start off with products, look into their storefronts, and then continue that kind of rabbit hole method that I was explaining balanced products. I don't know what this is. You know, you can look at all this stuff. And obviously, again, this didn't look like the, this is not like the greatest example because, you know, I don't know about this supplier at all, but this is not planned at all. So I don't have things to show you. This is sometimes what happens really, right? You come in here and you don't know. It's like, it's not what you look for. Um, but yeah, depending on the markets, depending on the, on the categories and the, and the suppliers you're looking for, this is also a really, really great way to find some unique products that you might not see or might not have seen on Amazon yet. Now, before we do move on to the next strategy, which is using Helium 10 to find different products in, in markets, if you learned literally anything or, you know, got any value from this video at all so far, please drop a like down below. Let's get to like 250 likes. I don't think we've ever got to 250 likes, um, you know, within like, let's say one to two days. Um, that would really blow me away. If you guys scroll down below and you see that this video hasn't hit that yet, just drop a like. It really means a lot. Uh, helps with the you know channel, helps with the algorithm, and I really do appreciate it. it. Makes me want to put out more awesome videos like this. So thank you so much for that. Now let's move into the next product research strategy, which is using black box, um, you know, to find your product. So go to you know if you have Helium 10. Show you how to do this. Really, this one we can only use on Helium 10. Go to product research tab, click on black box, and from here, what we're going to do is we're going to go into the niche section. So you can do the niche and the keywords. They're kind of the same thing, uh, sort of. Uh, but let's go into the niches, and we're going to type in 
uh, let's say meditation. Again, at this point, we're just looking for something to give us like a starting point to then continue with the storefront method that I showed. So we wanna do, let's say, you know, like this. Yeah, we can do it like this. Um, go through here, you don't even have to put any filters in, but you can look through again. It's gonna give you ideas of products that you could sell. So again, we found the meditation bench here, so nothing crazy, we, had, we found, saw this one before. This is something different, it's like a floor pillow, you know, um, again, stuff. You can just click on this arrow, it'll open up the listing for you and you can look through it. Again, go through the storefronts, uh, find other products, Anjania, I'll just show you an example, come in here, go to the storefront and look through the different products because there might be cool stuff that you, you know, didn't consider selling. Um, even these like, these, like uh, mats that you hang up on the walls and stuff, okay, doesn't really matter. But from here, you'll go through here and you keep looking and finding different products that you might not have seen. We've also seen this one, which is good. Um, we've seen something similar to the Zen Garden thing. That's another one that looks pretty cool. And even if it's like not making good money, right? So let's say this thing, right? It might not, making, it might not be making good money here with this particular version of it or this particular product, but that doesn't mean that the market actually is not good because there's always gonna be people that are not gonna be making sales for one reason or another. So this one's only making 1,400. So if we, but what if we type in um, Zen Garden for desk, for example, um, you know, there's definitely people in here making money, I would assume, so let me see. Yeah, so as you, yeah, so as you can see, there's people, you know, 25,800 reviews, 450 reviews. This is still not a saturated market. I know a lot of people would think this is saturated, but that's not, you know, it's, it's still a potentially good one, especially if you're coming out with something interesting. So that's one way to do it. Go through here, look at those products, figure out, you know, it'll, it'll show you again products that you may have not thought about before. Another thing you can do is click on the keyword section, like I mentioned, and from here, you can just come into the keyword search and just type in meditation. You can fill in some more stuff if you want, but really, we're not using this to find necessarily amazing products off the bat. We just wanna look for starting off points that we can then use in our rabbit hole method to look further and further into the markets and find different profitable products. So again, it's gonna show you, okay, meditation books, meditation cushion, that's cool, Zafu meditation, don't know what that is, but you can search that up and see meditation mat. Basically what you do here is you just go like, you just copy this and then you just go on um, Amazon and this is the keyword you'd have to search up. So we'd have to do all departments. Remember to do all departments when you, before you search and then it's meditation gifts and you can look at what other meditation gifts people are giving, right? And this is again gonna help you find different products. Even this, for example, I mean, this has a ton of, of reviews, but even this could be considered something like a meditation thing. Uh, so yeah, you can look through that, find different products that way. And you're, again, you're building out your catalog, you're building out a bunch of different products that you can potentially look into their profitability, which again, I will show you in just a second. So yeah, basically you just keep going through your list of keywords here. Uh, you can do meditation fountain, meditation Buddha, meditation chair, and look through which ones are actually gonna be profitable for you or things that are interesting to you that you would actually really want to sell. From there, I'm gonna show you right now how to do the profitability check. All right, so for those of you who made it this far, I wanna thank you, and for that, I do also wanna share with you my product validation sheet and how to use it. This is something, again, that I've made and I've only showed for my e list program, my e list students, but again, I do wanna provide value to everybody no matter what position you are in life and no matter what you can afford or not. Um, so what you're gonna do here, I'll have a link down below for this product validation sheet. All you're gonna have to do is come in here and click file and make a copy. You wanna make your own copy. You will not be able to use or write on this one. So just do that and then press okay, right? It's gonna instantly open you a new copy of your own file that you'll actually be able to edit. So from here, I'm just gonna go zoom out a little bit. From here, what you wanna start off with is, is whatever keywords, right? You have a list of keywords or a list of products that you wrote down that you're interested in starting. We're gonna use this one as an example for us, which is the folding meditation chair. That would be, you know, considered the main keyword, I believe. That's what a, um, you know, customer search up or maybe even meditation chair, okay? From there, what you wanna do is you wanna put in competitor one, competitor two, and competitor three. You look in the market, so if you type in, you know, folding meditation chair, and you wanna look at anything that's similar to this, right? Because this isn't really the same product, we're looking at products like this. So in this case, I mean, this could be considered a competitor. I wouldn't say it's a direct competitor, but it's similar. This is the one, this is the product that we're saying is our competitor number one. This is competitor number two. So um, I'm just gonna go ahead and copy their ASINs. So just grab, you can grab it like this. If you have the uh, Helium 10 extension, you can literally just do that. So, you know, you can put their ASINs in here. Um, you know, your different competitors, put them all into here. Uh, let's see, we can put, so we put that guy, we have this guy, which is number one, and you go through there and you put in all your different competitors. So you only want like three, okay? So your top three competitors. Then you put down their prices. So, I mean, this just remove the color. So 
just write it down or put in the link yourself. Then you put in the price. So let's say it was like $75, right? For competitor one. So this is competitor one, price one. Competitor two, price two. Competitor three, part three. So you put that all in there. You put in the reviews, their monthly revenue for one, two, and three. Then you have the product cost, product profit, and product ROI. So basically for each keyword here, you can put in like different products and you can analyze them. You put them all in here, you fill all this out and you can see all the data in one place. So you can make an informed decision on what should be your first product and what products are actually good to sell and what, which ones aren't. So um, that's how you do that. So you do the product cost for that. Obviously you go to Alibaba, you type in like, um, what do we do? Like meditation should share. And then you'd figure out, uh, so you'd find, you know, which suppliers are here. You know, if I have tons of videos on how to, you know, find suppliers. So I won't really go through exactly here, but you know, trade assurance, verified supplier, do both of those and then find the different products in here. Let's assume this is our product. It's not obviously, but let's assume it is. So this is $6 for this one. Let's just guess the other one is like 10 bucks. Obviously you'd actually want to find it. Um, we're going to go to helium 10 profitability calculator. So open up like your main competitor, go to the profitability calculator right here. And it's going to actually share with you all the FBA fees, and the, the, you know, just all the math will be done for you. So unit manufacturing costs, let's assume this is actually, so it says $16. I mean, we can keep it at $16. I think that's probably pretty high. I would assume that this is not like this product right here isn't $10 more than the other one, but maybe it is, it could be. I would say it's probably $16 with shipping included. So let's put $16 there. That's that price right here. And you can see that the net is about $36 uh, dollars for every single unit you sell. It's a 45% margin and a 219% ROI. That seems a little bit too good for me. That seems a little bit too good to be true. Uh, but if it is that case, you'd probably want to sell it for a little bit less. So let's say $69.99. Um, so you're selling it cheaper than everyone else. Yeah, see, save extra $10 when you apply this coupon. So that's this is the actual sale so price, $69.99. So you make $28 per sale, 40% margin, 168% ROI. So you take all those numbers and you go into your copy here and you put them in here for every single product. And that way you can really have them all in one place and understand which one is the best product to go in for you. Um, so that's how you do that. Uh, and then you just make it green or red by painting it, depending on which, if it qualifies or not for these criteria right here. So I'll zoom right back in so you guys can see this. So the criteria is this, two out of the th top three competitors have less than 1000 reviews. So if there's two out of the top three, so let's say the two that you put in here out of the three have more than a thousand reviews, it's too competitive, not good. The profit margin is more than 25%, which looked good in this one. ROI more than 130% looks good in this one. The revenue more than 7,000 for all three of your competitors looks good. We're good with that. It's not a restricted product. That's something you have to do your research on. It's not a patented product. Again, you're gonna have to do your research on that, you know, get a patent check. It's not a gated or in a gated category research, but these are things you gotta check and does not require any specific uh, or special certifications to sell in. So if any of these don't pass, then you put a red box next to that, that, uh, you know, that whole line of, of product that you put in. So this really gives you a lot of, uh, you know, data in one position and you can, you can be able to do this with this sheet. Again, I'll leave a link down below. You just want to click on file and make a copy and then you can use it that way. Another thing to really consider in this, which is not written here, but it's your potential for differentiation. If you go into a market that's a little bit saturated or something that has the potential to be, uh, to get saturated, you want to make sure that you're also not only considering these criteria, because these criteria will tell you if a product is good or not, but you also want to consider, you know, maybe if a product has worse numbers, right, has worse profit margin, worse ROI, it still falls within these categories, but it's, it has more differentiation potential. You can change it. You can make it, you know, either function better, look better, better quality, whatever the case may be. That's also something you really want to take into consideration when you're choosing a product to move forward with. And a quick way to really know what to change or what to differentiate is again, just go to your top three competitors and just look in the reviews, right? We can go to the one stars, the two stars, the three stars, take the time and look through them and read through them. Broken after two weeks of use. Okay. Don't know if we can fix that, but it seems like maybe it's not as durable as it needs to be. So there's only one review there that says that not good for bony butts. So it's thin foam, not comfortable. So again, you might be able to add a little bit more padding to that, right? So it seems like maybe this is, you know, not enough padding on the bottom and, you know, not good for um, bony butts, uh, you know, not a comfortable chair. So again, maybe the padding was all right while it lasted. Again, something with the quality wasn't, wasn't good. Looks nice, but not comfortable uh, again. And you want to look through everything, including the four and five star reviews, because 
when sometimes people will tell you, they'll leave a five star or four star and they'll say it's a great product, but I wish it had a little bit more foam on it. And that's a really good indication of what you can add to your product and improve on. Good supports, but requires more padding. So you see, we're really right away off the bat know exactly what to fix and exactly what we can show and say in our pictures and in our listing to have a better value proposition than this guy right here. So that's a quick way to do that. It's really the only way to be able to do this. Uh, but there's another thing that I want to share with you, which is called PicFu. And just type in PicFu. And basically what this is, it's like a split testing software. You can actually start like different polls and stuff like that. If you want to ask people for different colors or different styles or different, um, you know, products in general, uh, you can start a poll and basically you can get people to answer the questions. You'd be like, okay, which one do you prefer A or B? And that way you can know, okay, let's say A has, you know, this color, right? So let's say A is this, this brownish or this uh, bluish color. Let's say you want to do like a greenish color, right? So you can make a, a test or a poll on PicFu showing one picture of the, the blue one and one picture of the green one and seeing what people would rather buy. And so it's obviously not 100% accurate, you know, because you have a small sample size, but it will give you some ideas of what people would, would want to have or would like more. So that's another way to know if your differentiation is actually going to be good or not, if it's a visual one. So I hope you did find some value in the validation sheet. And at this point, you know, if you made it this far, first of all, I want to thank you for making this. Obviously, you're super serious about, you know, selling on Amazon. And if you do want to take it to that next level and you are in the market for a course or a program, you know, slash mentorship, definitely check the first link in the description. It's my Ecom Limitless program. And right now it actually comes with the one on one mentorship, which means that not only will you be able to learn everything, you know, you need to Know, need to know you get to actually take the course to that next level with the customization from a one-on-one -on -one mentorship right if you've ever wanted to work with someone ask questions uh, and really make sure that everything you're doing is the right way uh, you know now is your chance and it's not just someone who you know I hire to, to mentor people it's like you'll be able to work with me one-on-one -on -one to make sure that everything you're doing is the right you know the right thing so from finding a product to launching ranking scaling creating listings sourcing literally everything uh, to do with Amazon FBA. Um, now is your shot to pick that up for literally the best price we've ever had. So go ahead and check it out for the holidays. Um, if you're in the market, there is no better program out there. And, you know, as an example, right, literally, if you've, you know, in the e-commerce program, you'll be able to fill out these sheets and send them to me directly. And I'll be able to work with them and analyze them to make sure that everything you're doing is correct. And, you know, I'll be able to actually look over your products and decide and tell you, you know, if it's worth to pursue that product or not. So, you know, save you literally thousands of dollars from, you know, going to the wrong products in the wrong directions. So really, if you are in the pro in the market for a program, um, now's your best chance uh, to get involved. So thank you so much for you know, checking out this video. Thank you so much for watching through it. I really do appreciate all the support you guys have been putting on these videos. Remember to leave a like. Um, it really does mean a lot. So thank you very much. And I'll see you guys in the next video.